Um, another performance that I am actually sweating, and it really pains me to say this, has been the performance of Justin Fields so far. I don't know. As a Bears fan who watches every snap of those games there, this is one of the worst offensive schemes that I've ever seen. And I watched Matt Patricia call plays for an entire season. Um, just way too many opportunities. Somebody uh, posted back to back videos on Twitter of uh, the Bears running two curl routes into the exact same passing lane. Uh, there were two posts right into the the same passing lane, like just a horribly designed offense. It's not often that, you know, two wide receivers can be taken off of the field by literally just one body, but that's what's happening a lot in this offense. But Fields, I, I think overcoaching is definitely at play here. Like it, week one, it was don't make mistakes, just get the ball out quick. And he did that. He did what he was coached to do, but that led to no explosive plays, just way too heavy reliance on screen passes. He didn't run it, he run a lot. You know, this week he did run into the, he did rush a touchdown, which was cool, but it was on a play action bootleg. Um, and then the passing game was like, hey, let plays develop, you know, take some downfield shots. And as a result, he took more sacks because he was trying to let the play develop. And it's hard for the play to develop when they're bad. And I know there's some screen grabs that look a lot worse than they actually are, like Roshan basically running, uh, you know, completely wide open and Fields not looking at him. Uh, according to Maya Eberflus, Roshan wasn't supposed to be there anyway. So, you know, that that's uh, obviously a bit of an issue. It just really seems that nobody knows quite what's going on there. Um, where I am kind of looking as, a, you know, I am sweating this performance. It is making me nervous to start the year off. Um, his, his fantasy finishes haven't been killing us, but they haven't been what we, you know, we're drafting him for. He was going as, a, uh, especially in super flex leagues, he was like a top 10 pick in most drafts. Um, so I think for me, you know, I am getting really, really nervous about this. Uh, but where I am kind of, looking at a positive here um i think i do think it's going to open a buy window for anybody who still believes in justin fields um whether you do or don't we know what he can do as a runner and we know he'll get another shot in the nfl why i know that i've watched baker mayfield and carson wentz play for multiple different teams in the nfl after they started looking like ass and baker's looking pretty good um you know the uh the quarterback coach in tampa is the same quarterback coach who made geno smith look good again Baker's looked pretty good so far. Maybe we get an opportunity for Justin Fields with a quarterback coach who knows what he's doing and you know you, you can you can attack something there. So if you do see a buy window opening up for Fields, definitely take advantage of it, but for this year, you know, especially just cuz it seems like he just hasn't he hasn't found his stride as a, as a passer or a runner yet. You know, it, it'll happen for a drive at a time and that's really it. Um so I am starting to get nervous there. Um but you know, I think overall he's still going to be fine. It's just really concerning uh, to see the drop off this quickly, this early in the season. Because I've already seen the value. Like everybody seems to be out on fields right now, which is fair. I, I can't lie, um, but it, it it definitely sucks. Um. So with fields, I don't think that's a guy you really should be trying to pursue, trying to trade if you have him currently. So that's the first thing I want to say. Now, I did a little like 30 second diatribe about this when we talked about our squares, uh, scares and prayers this week. But um, I have a lot I want to say about this Bears offense and Justin Fields, as well as the entire team in general. I don't think that uh, there's enough demand for quality across the positions and across the staff because. I don't agree that Justin Fields did a great job getting the ball out quickly. I don't think he's doing really a, a great job at all reading underneath or reading deep or ripping when the guy is open with anticipation. I don't think he's doing that. I don't even think he's getting into his drop quick enough where he needs to get back with a sense of urgency. If you even just compare like Matthew Stafford's ability to, to get into his drop or if he has a quick screen that he's trying to get to a wide receiver, how quickly he plants or turns his, his feet. The, his lower half of his body just compared to fields it's night and day and fields is what three times the athlete matthew stafford is so i if think there's more i think there are, are a ton of issues i haven't gotten to the offensive line yet but those that want to just blame the offensive line and give fields a pass you you are way off there sir I'm not saying you're doing that but people that have done yeah. that you're way off because he has a lot of his own issues he's got to get, get figured out but the thing is i feel that they're correctable but he needs the proper staff in place to one demand that he does these things repeatedly coach this into him and give him confidence at the same time, because there's, there's a point in time in which people quarterbacks kind of back off because they're afraid they're going to continue to throw picks when you just continuously need to understand and read 
the defense to know when you can read and rip, hit with anticipation. And that's a big reason why I truly believe that Brock Purdy got the job over Lance. Not saying he already wasn't a better quarterback, but in a Kyle Shanahan type offense, you need to understand what you're looking at, what the defense is doing, when your guy's going to come open and send it. And that's something that Brock Purdy does very, very well. And personally, I believe that Brock Purdy is going to be the quarterback there forever until Shanahan's gone if he continues to do those things well, because with the timing offense, things like that, where you have uh, receivers where you need to be kind of more towards the accurate side. Yeah. I wish Purdy had more arm strength, kind of like how Justin Fields has some pretty good arm strength, but they need confidence in their ability to read what they're seeing and put the ball out there for their playmakers to make plays. So we want to talk about then the offensive line being an issue where then it causes Justin to run where Justin really needs to figure out the idea of taking a couple steps to his left, a couple steps to his right, resetting his feet and locating his receiver downfield. Sorry, just things I've, I've seen that drive me yeah. nuts. And then we want to talk about like Claypool not even being able to play receiver. Yeah, he caught a touchdown last week, but that guy doesn't block when he when he's set up in screens. He's dropped passes all over the place and he never runs the right route. And if we're talking about running two routes at the same time, they did that against Green Bay about five times, five different yeah. plays where they literally had the yep. receivers running the same route. Yeah, it's just, it's a poorly designed offense and no part of it. It's, I think where I give Fields some slack is I feel like too much blame is being put on him where overall it's just, it's an incohesive team that doesn't know what they're doing. The offensive line, while not bad, definitely has not been good, especially in week one. You know, they were some of the lowest graded pass blockers in football, um, including Nate Davis, who I believe was the lowest graded pass blocker in football that week. Um, but yeah, it's it's just not been good. Uh, if you have fields, definitely don't sell right now. You're not going to get market for him. Um, but, you know, if you're if you see the buy window open up in your leagues, definitely attack it. Now, one last thing I want to say about just the, the quarterback uh, quarterback position in general is that we see this a lot where then there are quarterbacks that are overpaid for right but then you can go get yourself a veteran quarterback that continues to produce at let's say qb12 level well, like let's just say uh, kirk cousins i understand that kirk cousins isn't perfect but there's a reason why those quarterbacks stay in the league for so long is because they do certain things that allow the offense to stay on schedule that allow their their receivers to get targeted so there are certain times where you might just have to kind of like I'm not saying that this is the case with Fields, but you might just have to lean out on certain players because of the fact that they haven't shown it. So there's no reason to invest any more capital where you can go get an, um, a pretty decent QB 14, 12 to 14. I understand Kirk's played much better than that, but just in general, a player like that for you know a second round plus or you know a first second swap type thing where you're getting the quarterback to come back to your side and it doesn't cost you a ton to do so. Those might be moves to kind of look at where then you can add depth to your roster in other areas because you're not burying all of this capital into one position that's going to underwhelm and underperform because you're putting all that capital in you got to get like 22 24 points plus on a pretty consistent weekly basis for that quarterback to be worth it yeah it's uh quarterbacks are annoying me this year to say the least um speaking of bad quarterback play that somehow turned into good quarterback back play kind of all at the same time how do you feel about daniel jones so far oh man um i think daniel jones is revealing himself to us as what he what he is and i think the first half was a lot more representative of that actually up until like what like six minutes ago in the third quarter when they're down 28 to 7 i think it was pretty representative of it but um i think it shows that he has ceiling but it's also very a very scary way to play dyna- or play fantasy and play dynasty at the same time yep. because this is once again a quarterback that you're you know the the volatility of him is just either you're you're tanking your team value or you're hopefully scoring 30 points a week and that's just not a position I want to be in but also we saw in leagues this this offseason startup leagues he was going you know 5th through 7th round and that I've never felt like a comfortable the 4th yeah, just never felt like a comfortable position to take him. So I'm not really in on Jones anyway. I don't I don't have a single share. But the idea when he was cheap and running the ball is different than when you're actually, once again, having to actually put capital into this player. So I'm probably moving him if I can to say, hey, look at all, this, all these points he's putting up. Even when he has a bad game, he's able to get X number of points. But definitely not a guy I'm trying to go out and get. 100%. Same with all their wide receivers. Uh, that My approach with their wide receivers is – I want Darren Waller and a healthy Saquon Barkley. 
they're, they're going to be the only consistent week to week performers. Um, you know, Isaiah Hodgins, he's going to, again, he's going to find the end zone every once in a while when it comes to the slot, you know, Sterling Shepard clearly is not the Sterling Shepard of old Paris Campbell's not great. Isaiah or, uh, Jalen Hyatt, he'll catch a bomb. He'll drop a couple passes too, but he'll catch a bomb or two. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really just kind of a stay away for me there. So that's a no sweat for me. I was fading them all pretty much coming into the season, except for Hodgins. Cause he was just so cheap essentially. Um, and it's just gonna kind of continue to be that way. But, 